Hi, I'm Sally Henze, and we use oral methods uh, in prison ministry here in the greater Houston area. We were asked to go to the WIND unit to uh, teach a class or lead a class on house church planting, knowing that some of the guys, when they get out, uh, may not have a place to go to church, may not be welcome. And if they knew how to plant a house church, then they would be able to have a place for Bible study and fellowship. Research shows that 80% of inmates are illiterate. So we knew we were going to have to use some all methods. We set aside a three-week period to do the storying, to teach them the story. We go every Monday night, once a week, and so three weeks. The first week, I would teach them the basics. I'd model it for them. Usually, I tell the story of the paralyzed man out of Mark 2. It goes like this. Now, this is a story from God's Word. Now, Jesus returned to Capernaum. While he was there, he was teaching in a house. There were so many people who came to hear him. They filled the house and were even standing in the doorway. Now, there was a paralyzed man in town, and he was carried to Jesus by four of his friends. But when they got there, they couldn't get in the house. So they went up on the roof, and they dug a hole in the roof, and they lowered the man down right in front of Jesus. Now Jesus, seeing their faith, looked at the man and said, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now there were teachers of the law in the house, and they were thinking to themselves, Who does this man think he is? Only God can forgive sin. Now Jesus knew what they were thinking. And he said, why do you think these things? Is it easier for me to say, son, your sins are forgiven, or get up, take up your bed, and walk? But so that you may know that I have the authority to forgive sin, he looked at the man and he said, son, get up, take up your bed, and walk. And the man got up, took up his bed, and walked out the door. The people were amazed. They said, we've never seen anything like this. And they worshiped God. Now that is a story from God's word. Now after I tell it, we'll read it. Maybe I'll read it to them, or I'll tell the story again and let them follow along in their Bibles and talk about the differences in storing and the actual reading of the scripture. The third time we tell it, we tell it as a group. I'll start the first two sentences and somebody from the group will step in and share a sentence or two. They'll carry it along as far as they can. If they hit a roadblock, I'll kick in another sentence. We keep going. The fourth time, I break them up into groups of four. And as a group of four, they tell the story with everyone taking a turn and the others coaching him and keeping the story true to Scripture. Then we go to two, two people, and each one tells the story to their partner. Sometimes at the end, we'll ask a brave soul to stand up and share the story with the whole group. And I tell them, by now, you have heard this story five, six, seven times. You can now go tell this story. You've got it. So their homework assignment is to go tell the story this week. They have to share it with someone. Cross, they're sitting next to them in chow hall. They're in line together to do something. Somebody they work with or they're selling. Someone. So the next thing I do is I give them tips. Like how to start the story. This is a story from God's book. That was a story from God's book. That book ends the story, especially for oral people, especially if they're illiterate and can't figure out when we quit telling the story and going into, into conversation. Now, another way I teach them is storyboarding. Now, storyboarding, my helper has my marker, storyboarding is like a comic strip. Now, 
The offenders, a lot of the offenders really love this one. Now this is Genesis 1. Now what we want to do is put our scenes in here and it helps you learn and remember the story. I will occasionally use this when I'm troubling, having trouble getting a sequence down or having trouble um, learning the story. This and what to keep in and what to leave out. This with Genesis 1, wow. I never knew the sequence of those six days. I didn't learn that little song when I was in Sunday school, but I learned it this way. Day one, day let God said, let there be light. And he separated the light from the darkness. Day two, separated the water from above. Those are our clouds from the water below the ocean. Day three, God made dry land appear in the water and put seed bearing plants on the land. I'm not an artist. You don't need to be, but you can see how that works. Now, what's really a neat trick, I never realized this before, but it's really cool. After he created the earth, he went back and he populated it in the same sequence. It really helps you remember. So, now we get the sun, the stars, the moon. See how cool that is? Birds, don't laugh at my fish now. It's the best I can do. And four-footed creatures. The wild animals, the domestic animals, maybe that's a cow, and man. Some of the guys really took off on that. They'd come back next week with their story so elaborately illustrated and sectioned out on the storyboard. Not an artist, but it works. It, it, it's a memory tool. It's a memory tool. Some of those guys were artists. They did it really well. Now we would uh, sign up for stories. Uh, Old Testament, New Testament. Each guy would get two stories. One in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament. We tell the Old Testament stories in the second week and the New Testament stories on the third week. Stories we would use would, uh, we, we got the the core list from uh, Dr. J. O. Terry's uh, core list of evangelism stories. It starts with Genesis 1, 2, and 3, the creation, uh, the creation of man and placed in Eden, the fall. That's a lot of time on just three chapters, but that's the, that's the foundation. That's the foundation. God punishes sin. Maybe you tell the story of Noah or the story of Cain and Abel. God's promises to Abram. Abraham's offer of sacrifice of Isaac and the substitution of a ram. The Passover and the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. The Ten Commandments. We can't keep them. God gives us laws to live by and we can't keep them. Therefore, blood sacrifice is required for the forgiveness of sin. So we tell about the blood sacrifice. We talk about the prophets prophesying how Jesus comes, his birth, his death, what he would be like. The New Testament, we do the birth, the virgin birth, the baptism. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We talk about the things Jesus could do. Jesus can heal. Jesus has the authority to forgive sin. Jesus has power over death. Jesus has power over demons. Jesus has power over nature. We talk about the Last Supper, the trial, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension. 
Now we'll add stories depending upon the number of men we have. We'll flesh out that list, but that's the basics. <clears throat> One of the guy's favorite stories is The Gathering Demoniac. They love that one because so many of them identify. Now this is a story from God's book. As Jesus crossed the lake, he arrived at the shore, he was getting out of the boat, and a man came and fell at Jesus' feet and said, Jesus, son of the most high God, what would you do with me? Now this man lived among the tombs, the graveyard. He walked around naked day and night, screaming and hollering. He cut himself. They tried binding him with chains and he'd break them. And he's at Jesus' feet. And Jesus said, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for there are many of us. And he begged Jesus again and again. They begged Jesus again and again not to make them leave the area. Now there was a herd of pigs over on the hillside and they begged Jesus, let us go in the pigs. So Jesus gave them permission and they went into the pigs. When they entered the pigs, the pigs ran down the hillside into the lake and drowned. Now the keepers of the pigs saw that and they ran into town. And they told everybody what they had experienced and seen. Well, the people came back out and they saw the man sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind. And the keepers of the pigs were telling them everything they saw and they became afraid and they asked Jesus to leave. And Jesus said, no. You go back to your home and you tell people how God has shown you mercy. And that is a story from God's book. Now, one of our guys would actually fall on his knees to tell that story. Because he'd say, that's me. That was me. Others say, when you tell the story, it's like I'm watching a movie. I can see it in my head for the first time. One guy goes, now the stories I get, I can do that. He was a new believer. He'd scammed his way into class <laughs> and got saved in the class, which is not the usual. Usually we have guys who've already been saved and discipled a little before they, they uh, get approved for the class. But somehow he'd scammed his way in and he got saved in the class. And uh, he says, those stories I can do. I can do them. I can tell people a story. And so it, it really took... By the time we got to the third week in the New Testament stories, they, uh, they were cross-referencing and remembering what other stories were and bringing them back in and looking things up in their Bible. They'd get so excited. They were experiencing God's Word in a way that they communicate and that takes root in their heart. Stories are simple. Don't require props. Don't require setting. You can tell them, in West Africa, around a, around a campfire, in Brazil, under a tree, driving down the freeway in a pouring down rainstorm or in somebody's living room. It doesn't matter. You can share the story. And God's Word takes root in the heart of an oral learner. <clears throat>